Hi guys, it's Gabby, and I'm pumped to be back to talk with you about how to be happier and more excited on a day-to-day -day basis through the power of goal setting. Today, we have just like two or three game changers that are gonna blow your mind because they're easy to understand and they're scientifically proven to make you a bajillion times more likely to be successful than everyone else who's not setting their goals the right way. So if you're into making up words like bajillion, goal setting, or just feeling excited, confident, and successful, then sit back, relax, and put your conversations on hold and get ready for an amazing episode of In Control. Okay, so let's get down to business because nobody likes a long video. So have you ever sat and dreamed of what it would be like to actually be successful? So daydreaming is cool and all, but too many people just daydream and hope and wish, and that's not how we reach our future hopes and dreams. Studies actually show that daydreaming without goal setting will actually bum you out real fast. And by the way, did you know that there are people out there that actually study the best ways to set goals? Like they actually do science experiments to figure out how to set goals that actually get us to do the stuff that we want to do, because that's what goal setting is about, right? So let's see what we got to do next. So these social scientists, as they're called, say that there are a few main ingredients that have to be part of goal setting in order for us to really feel excited about life and see success and make us more likely to get what we want. First, our goals that we set for ourselves, or even goals that other people set for us, need to be hard or challenging. I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, no, I don't feel like doing something hard. Don't say that, Gabby. Now my teacher heard you, and now they're gonna expect us to do more, and Mrs. Kirk is already such a hard teacher. <laughs> okay, just hang on a second. The reason why scientists say that hard goals are good is because they bring the best out of us, and that is the thing that makes us feel good about ourselves, which then fuels us to work harder, and then we reach success. Sitting on the couch, staring at the wall, eating a bag of Takis is cool and all, but have you ever felt what it was like to achieve a hard goal? Think about that for a second. Remember the first time you rode a bike on your own? It was terrible when you fell like seven times and screamed at your mom or dad for letting go of the seat too soon, but when you got it, that was special. So game changer number one in goal setting. Set challenging goals that demand excellence from you. Setting easy ones has actually been proven to make you fail, and that doesn't feel good which then bums you out, sets you back more, and then you're gonna be all mopey, and no one likes that. So here's game changer number two in goal setting. The goal should be about the skills, not the results. Okay, so a lot of times when we set academic goals, we'll be like, I wanna get an A in math. What happens is, is that with every new lesson, we can start to see the challenge as a threat to our goal. We think stuff like, oh gosh, if I don't get this, I'm not gonna get an A. So teachers, if you're listening, this is huge. Instead of setting goals like, I want you to get an A in math, or I want you to get a 96 this quarter, the goal should be about the skills you want to develop, not the results you want to receive. So here's what the goal should look like. My goal is to master the skill of solving equations with positive and negative numbers by the end of the quarter. You see that? It changes the way we approach the challenge. Instead of having tunnel vision about a number and then freaking out when we fail an assignment, we can take a growth mindset approach that says, I haven't mastered it yet. And when we do, we'll get that A that we really wanted, and then we'll feel good, and then we'll build confidence from there. So again, the goal should be about the skills you need, not the results you want. Okay, so when I was in middle school, it used to really help me when the teacher did examples. So let's do that really quick. Let's say you wanna get healthier and lose a little bit of weight. The incorrect way to set that goal would be to say, I wanna lose 10 pounds, or I wanna weigh, I don't know, 120 pounds. The problem is that it's focusing on the result, right? So to do it correctly, you'd want to A, make sure it's hard, and B, focus on the skill. So maybe you would say, I wanna learn how to run three miles in under 30 minutes, or I wanna learn to be able to run one mile in less than six minutes. It's hard, believe me, and it doesn't focus on the result, the weight, but rather it focuses on the fitness skill. Another example of a bad goal would be, I wanna make the basketball team. It focuses on the result, right? No bueno. A good goal would be, I want to learn how to make 30 left-handed layups in a row without missing. It's hard and it focuses on the skill. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. We hope this helps and we know through research that if you do this right, you'll be happier, more excited, and more successful than ever before. And who doesn't want that? Well, we'll see you next time here on In Control.